precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is destiny time and this is your moment, your time to encounter your supernatural destiny with the Lord Jesus. You know, it's such an awesome privilege for me to come and share God's word through this medium. And I pray that you have been blessed. We've been getting a lot of calls from people from our previous telecast. And they've been saying how blessed they have been uh, through this program called Destiny Time. So if you'd like to uh, share your feedback, if you'd like to call us, you can see the number below uh, and you can call us and, and tell us what the Lord has been doing in your lives. So uh, without wasting much time, you know, let's dive into God's word uh, uh, right now. And, and, and I want to turn your attention to Exodus chapter number 33, verses 7. For the next few weeks, I want to focus on teaching encounters with God. What happens when you encounter God? What does it mean to see God? What does it mean to walk with God? You know, I'm sure each of you who's watching this telecast, you have a hunger and the thirst deep inside of you to walk with God. You want to really somehow have a fresh encounter with the Lord Jesus that would change the course of your life. I'm sure you're agreeing with what I'm saying. So uh, for the next few weeks, if you'd like to focus with me on the different encounters that men of God had in the Bible and how it impacted them and how it would change them, I'm telling you, you're going to be in for a blessed time in the study of God's Word. So if you notice in Exodus chapter number 33 verses 7, the Bible says that Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it outside the camp, afar off from the camp and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. You see, when you want to seek God, there is a place that you need to prepare for you to seek God. You see, Moses was the greatest prophet in Israel, one of the greatest. The Lord called Moses as a man who whom he spoke with face to face. He called him a friend. He said, there is no prophet in the house of Israel who has spoken face to face with me. So Moses made it a point to see God even in the pinnacle of his ministry. You can imagine him leading over six lakh people out of Egypt into the promised land. And while they were journeying into the promise, he encountered so many challenges, so many situations, so many discouragements, so many setbacks. But there's one thing that Moses kept doing again and again is to go back into the mountain and sit at the feet of God and receive divine instruction on how to lead the nation of Israel into promised land, into the promised land. So, so we need to understand this for our lives as well, my friend. It's not enough if we have just been saved. It's not enough if you're just attending church. It's not enough if you just try to read the Bible once in a while. For us to pursue this Christian life, for us to walk this walk of faith, we must be people who will walk into the presence of God every day and encounter His presence every day. And Moses, the Bible says, took the tabernacle and, and he pitched it outside the camp. Now, there are two things that you need to understand here. He took the tabernacle and pitched it outside the camp. The camp is where the people were. The camp is where all kinds of natural activity was happening. The people were eating and drinking and people were, you know, laughing and, 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 and they were living with their families and day-to-day -day affairs were going on in the camp. So the camp was not the ideal place for Moses to see God. So instead what he did was he took the tabernacle and he pitched it outside the camp. There's a beautiful principle that Moses is teaching us through this verse. In order for us to see God, we must set ourselves apart. It may be geographically, it may be physically, it could be in any way. If you have to go to a different place and sit and seek the presence of God, you have to do it because that is how we can become serious about encountering the presence of God. And the Bible goes on to say, And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation which was outside the camp. You see, 
The danger today in the church is this, that we are becoming very familiar with God's presence. And it is time for us to take our tents and pitch it outside the camp. Pitch it outside the pressures of daily life. Pitch it outside your family. Pitch it outside, you know, the place where you live. Because God wants us to come and be in a place where we can encounter His presence in a supernatural way. Amen. And then the Bible goes on to say that as Moses began to do this often, there was a time that Moses went and sat in the presence of God because the Lord had called him to come and spend time with him. And he never came down the mountain for more than 40 days. And the people of Israel began to wonder what happened to Moses, what happened to our leader. So, and they, what they did was, they took all their gold earrings and they brought it to Aaron, the high priest, and they gave it to him and they said, why don't you make us gods so that we can follow and we can worship? Now, this is something that you need to uh, see in scripture because the gold that the Israelites got was from the Egyptians. The Lord favored them while they were exiting Egypt and gave them gold and jewelry and all the abundance so that when they brought that into the desert it was for them to use it for the building of God's tabernacle. So they had the gold and the earrings with them and when they saw that Moses had not come down from the mountain they gave it to Aaron and they said why don't you make us gods that we can worship and we can follow after. And the thing that we learn from this is this, my friend. This is the first point that I want to make through this telecast. The Israelites, they had favor with the Egyptians and they brought the gold into the desert. They had provision from God himself. But what happened to them was this. They did not have a revelation of the provider himself, but they only had a revelation of his provision. Whenever you have a revelation of the provision of God and not the provider, you end up worshiping the provision. And I'm sure you are watching this program right now and saying that God has blessed me, God has provided for me, God has given me all the blessings, but I still don't have a deep intimate relationship with God because I'm so caught up in the provisions of God, I'm so caught up in the blessings of God that I don't have time to seek God. And my friend, the Lord is calling you today. He's calling you to come to a place where you will have a revelation of the blesser, where you will have the revelation of the healer, you will have the revelation of your savior, of your provider. Otherwise, we would make the mistake that the Israelites made. And Aaron was pressurized by the people to make gods of gold. And he gave in to the pressure of the people and he began to carve those images of gold by putting them into fire. Now, if you notice, just a few chapters earlier in Exodus chapter number 24 verses 9 to 11, Aaron was with God and Moses and they ate and drank together. Can you imagine? Moses, Aaron and God, they drank together and they had fellowship together and they were at the feet of God. Just a few chapters earlier, Aaron had an encounter with God. And here he's sitting at a place where he is putting all the gold into the fire and he's making carved images, golden calf images. Aaron moved away from the position that God gave him, my friend. It says here that whenever you move from the position that the Lord has given you, we end up in compromising and surrendering to the pressures of people. This is what we understand from Aaron's act. 
he gave up his position. Moses had anointed him to be an elder. When he had anointed him to be an elder, he was supposed to lead the people of Israel. He was supposed to watch over them. But instead of watching over them, he was giving into their demands. He was giving into their pressures. And today so many people in the church, they're pressurized to take certain decisions which they're not supposed to take, which is against the word of God. And God is asking us as a church to hold on to our position. What is our position? Our position is not a title. Our position is that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Whether you're a believer, whether you're a pastor, whether you're a leader, we all are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we are to be ruled by the word of God. We are to be governed by the word of God. We are to be in, 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 in control of what God is telling us to do and not what man is telling us to do. And God wants us to come to that place of maturity, my friend. And we can come to that place of maturity only when we make the presence of God a priority. You see, for Moses, the presence of God, the glory of God, the fire of God dwelling in the place where God was, was his highest priority. Because he knew being there, he would receive the fresh word of God. He would receive the fresh manna from heaven. He would receive fresh divine instructions to come and give it to the people. And today, how many of us are spending time at the feet of Jesus? I'm telling you, the presence of God is here. And He is tugging your heart tonight, saying, Come into my presence. Come and worship me. Come and encounter me because the Lord is desiring to touch us in a fresh way, my friend. He wants to anoint us with fresh oil. He wants us to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to have a fresh revelation of His Word. He wants us to come into a place where He will place divine authority over our lives. Hallelujah. And that's what happens in the presence of God. In the presence of God, you begin to encounter the divine strength of God Almighty. It doesn't matter how weak you are. It doesn't matter how challenging the situation is. It doesn't matter how challenging life is. When you decide to come to the presence of God and sit at the feet of Jesus, the heavens will open over your life and God will pour out a spirit in an awesome way on your life my friend and that is what God wants to do in your life and Moses teaches us that principle hallelujah thirdly this is what I want to share with you you see as Moses was encountering the presence of God as Moses was given the Ten Commandments the Lord told Moses what was going on down in the camp while he was in the mountain, God was telling him what was going on in the camp. The camp is the place of reality. And God was showing Moses what the people of God were up to. And just a little lower than Moses was Joshua who was sitting and waiting for Moses to come down. A faithful man. You see, Joshua had the character to stay with Moses. Even though he was not experiencing the glory and the fire and the presence and the voice of God, he still had the character to sit at the feet of Moses. To sit at a place where God was calling Moses to come. And Joshua was like a support for Moses. And Joshua says that there is a noise of war in the camp. You can imagine now, you just picture eyes. Moses is at a higher level, Joshua is slightly at a lower level, and the people of Israel are down there. Moses at the mountain in the presence of God knows clearly and hears clearly what is happening in the camp. Joshua did not know. He said there is noise in the camp. And Moses comes down, and when he heard Joshua say that, he said, 
that the people of God have done a great sin against the Lord. He had heard God's voice. Moses heard the voice, but Joshua heard the noise. What are you hearing today? Many a times our lives are ruled by the noise of this world. There is so much noise everywhere. People are making all kinds of noises. Churches, you know, are doing so many programs. People do so many programs and all kinds of stuff is happening and there is no room for the still small voice of God. And God is saying that you need to come to my feet where you can hear the clear voice of God. Moses heard the voice, but Joshua heard the noise. Whatever is stopping you from hearing God's voice, I want you to come out of it. And I want you to come to the feet of Jesus. You see, God was about to consume the congregation of Israel with his wrath. But Moses pleaded with the people but Moses pleaded with God for the people of Israel he said God what is wrong with you God how can you do this if you do this the Egyptians are going to think that their gods took them into the desert to kill them and Moses is interceding in the presence of God can you imagine the conversation that God and Moses are having the fourth thing that I want to tell you is this it takes a friend of God to change the heart of God. It takes the fr a friend of God to change the heart of God. You see, as Moses interceded between God and the people of Israel, he caused the God of heaven to release mercy and stop judgment. That's what God needs and that's what God is looking for nowadays. He's looking for friends of God who can stand in the gap. Who can stand in the gap for their churches. Who can stand in the gap for the cities. Who can stand in the gap for nations. Because the friends of God are the ones who will cause God to release mercy and stop the judgment of God. Hallelujah. Let me read this to you. The reason why God is still merciful to this broken world of ours is because there are friends of God on this earth interceding and pleading for His mercy. And my friend, I want you to now ask the Lord, saying, God, make me, your, make me a friend of God. A friend is the one who knows the heart of God. He knows the very heartbeat of God. He knows the emotions of God. He knows what God's desires are. He knows the will of God. He hears the voice of God. And he not only hears, but he has conversations with God. Hallelujah. Can you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit right now? The presence of God is touching you. The presence of the Holy Spirit is about to visit your life in a supernatural way. And I want you, my friend, to consider seeking the presence of God. If there's one thing that you want to accomplish at the end of your life, what would that one thing be? I would say that one thing is that you should have been a friend of God. A man and a woman, a boy and a girl, to have walked with God. Hallelujah. That's what God is asking. Why did God save us? God saved us so He can walk with us. So He can release His presence on us. So He can reveal Himself to us. What has become a priority today? Is ministry become a priority? Is your work become a priority? Is your job become a priority? Is your family become a higher priority than God? It's time, my friend, to turn your attention towards God's presence. Because God is calling His friends and you are a friend of God. You're sitting and watching this telecast and you have tears in your eyes right now. And you're saying, God has been calling me to come to His presence. But I have been failing. 
but he is releasing a fresh new opportunity, a fresh new window. Set a time aside and seek the presence of God and you will see how God will begin to do things in your life, my friend. Fifthly, this is what I want to talk to you. When Moses came down the mountain and he saw what was happening, he threw the tablets on the golden calf and he called the people and he said, whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. And immediately you would notice so many people running towards Moses. So we learn from this that in order for us to walk with, walk with God, there has to be a separation and consecration from the camp. The camp is a place of sin. The camp is a place of deception. And you need to come out of the camp, my friend. Come out of the camp and enter into the tabernacle of the Lord. Because that's where God can separate you. God can anoint you. And God can cover you with His mighty presence. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord, my friend. And I'm asking you right now to agree with me. Why don't you stretch forth your hands? I want you to agree with me. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to touch you. Because I know that you have a burden to seek the face of God. You don't have to worry about results now. You don't have to worry about miracles now. You don't have to worry about breakthroughs now. All you need to ask God for right now is God, give me a grace to seek your presence. Give me the grace to come after your heart. Give me the grace to search your word. And that's where you will find your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Stretch forth your hands and I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as your children lay hands on this television and as I lay hands, Father, I speak that the power of the Almighty God will surge through this place, O oh Father God, and it will touch them in the mighty name of Jesus that every chain on their lives will be broken by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. That every discouragement, every deception, every setback, every pain, every worry will be removed by the power of the Almighty God from their lives right now, Father God. And I speak the fire of the Almighty God to flow and touch and bring them into the presence of Jesus. I see God bringing you out of the realm of darkness. No weapon formed against your walk with God shall prosper from this day onwards. God is saying, come and I will cleanse you. Separate from the world and come into my presence. Consecrate your lives because this is God's heart. He wants to purify you. He wants to set you free. And He wants to give you a new, new beginning, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that somebody right now who's praying for the gift of tongues, you're praying, Lord, I want to be filled with the gift of tongues. Right now, I see that in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak the baptism and the fire of the Holy Spirit to fill that individual right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, be full of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Be filled in the name of Jesus. Receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit into your life. Receive the anointing of God. Receive the gift of tongues. Oh, Jesus, thank you. You are the great baptizer. Jesus Christ is the great baptizer. And He is baptizing you with His fire from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. He is baptizing you with His fire and glory right now, my friend. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be healed in your body. Be set free. Every yoke be broken. Every 
plan of the enemy be cancelled in Jesus' name. And Lord, set your children apart for your kingdom. From today, let them encounter your presence like never before, Lord. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Now, there's such a tremendous presence that's still flowing, my friend. I want you to drink from the river of life. Even as you are experiencing God's presence right now, I want you to call the number that's on the screen below and tell us what's happening to you. Tell what the Lord has been doing to you right now. And may God's presence rest upon you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Heal your children. Set them free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. And have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. May God's grace and presence be with you. Thank you.